Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, March 29th, 2024, and today we are going to be talking about President Obama, President Clinton, and of course, President Biden at a star-studded event last evening raising $26 million for the re-election campaign for President Biden here, a major tag team effort from the top Democrats in the party here coming to New York City and utilizing and tapping into a resource like New York City, tapping into a very, very prominent Democratic area with a lot of wealthy Democratic donors here and turning out big numbers for Joe Biden's presidential campaign. Now, at surface level, you might be wondering, why is this a major headline? Why does it matter that President Biden, President Clinton, and President Obama were together? After all, they are all Democrats. And I would first say, you know, it is still a very, very notable thing that presidents do band together and do joint efforts, especially given that you do not have a sitting, you know, president here endorsing Donald Trump for re-election, of course, besides himself. And so it is sort of major here that President Obama is uh, and President Clinton are coming out of the, you know, woodwork here to support President Biden. But I also think the more important part of it is that this $26 million speaks to a very, very long-lasting story we've seen over the past year in terms of a failure to fundraise on the Trump side, especially going into multiple legal battles that he is now using the little amounts of money that he has fundraised for said legal battles. What we're looking at here is that Donald Trump in the 2024 campaign just can't seem to be matching what Biden and the DNC are doing here. Biden and the DNC have a very large fundraising advantage here. And as of March 21st, the DNC and Biden ended February with $97.5 million in the campaign in the bank. Donald Trump and the RNC, just $44.8 million. And doubling this is something that, you know, Republicans really cannot allow to happen. This is exactly what happened in the 2020 presidential election when Joe Biden out-fundraised Donald Trump by nearly $300 million. And when races are so close like they were in states like Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona, the three states that handed Joe Biden the presidency, all of which by less than one percentage point, that few million dollars that could be spent on future offices or more advertisements or whatever it might be really, really, really matter when it comes down to these very narrow vote margins. And had Donald Trump fundraised as much as Joe Biden and spent as much as Joe Biden, chances are he probably would have won the presidency. What we know here is that Democrats typically out fundraise Republicans, and it doesn't always translate to victories. But in 2020, it absolutely did and was the main reason why Joe Biden was able to stay afloat and do so well in that election. And with this continuing, it's starting to paint a similar story to what we saw back in the 2020 election, something that the Trump campaign simply cannot afford to happen here. And that actually raised many concerns. Fundraising is something the Trump campaign and the RNC in its entirety absolutely care about. Enough so that after a poor fundraising year in 2023, their lowest year in fundraising in RNC history. You can actually take a look here, looking at the year 2023, the lowest in seven years here. Donald Trump floated the idea of ousting Ronna McDaniel as chair. More people started going to the press about fundraising woes and considered again to oust Ronna McDaniel. And then he did oust Ronna McDaniel and replaced her with a family member. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later down the line. But the point here is that these lack of fundraising numbers, the lack of, you know, the ability to reel in tens of millions of dollars in the way that the Biden campaign did overnight is something that I think that Republican Party has really been trying to tackle here. At the end of the day, this Biden event last evening raised more money than the Donald Trump campaign did in the entire month of February. One singular evening equivalent to $10 million more than what the Trump campaign raised in February of 2024. I mean, even then he was going through a primary and all this conversation about, you know, he needs the money. These legal fees are popping up. A lot of the reasons why I think you're seeing a decrease in fundraising numbers for President Trump is because of how the fundraising, uh, the fun, the money that was fundraised in the last election and after the last election was spent. That I think a lot of Republicans now look at and say, I don't want my money going to that. And so I think there's a major disconnect here. One thing that I do think was correct on the Trump side, just objectively speaking, was removing Ronna McDaniel. I think there clearly was some major, major lacking parts here when it comes down to fundraising, when it comes down to candidate strategy, when it comes down to intervention or lack of intervention in key, key primaries that genuinely make a difference on practically every level. And I think it was the right move for her to go. What I don't think was the right move was replacing her with somebody in the family. 
replacing her with somebody that has the last name Trump. I see the appeal, right? It's just a phone call. It's just a text message instead of all this bureaucracy and all this, you know, outside and external relations. But it doesn't make sense electorally. And it certainly doesn't improve their ability to fundraise. Laura Trump went to the press when she was questioned in the time of her candidacy, in the time of Ronald McDaniel's expulsion, or I guess removal as chair of the RNC, if she thought that GOP voters would like to see the RNC pay Donald Trump's legal fees. And to which she essentially had said yes, that voters care about the legal fees, and it is of interest of the donors to donate to the effect of having that money spent on these legal fees here. And while people can argue back and forth with her if this is something that is true, at the end of the day, she is at the helm of one of the most powerful political parties and the helm of the Republican Party that Donald Trump is running under. And so knowing that, knowing that this is the mentality, this is the level of thinking here, I don't imagine their fundraising woes are going to be that much, you know, different. I don't imagine that all of a sudden, because Laura Trump is here, that there will be now solutions to these problems. And I think as you start to see more and more fundraisers like these, it also translates to issues like electability on the Trump side. Right now, the Trump team has zero offices in the state of Michigan. The Biden campaign is launching over 10. In North Carolina, they're launching over 10 as well building out field offices, going to different parts of the state, going across the United States. The Biden campaign has announced investments in states like Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, all of the swing states that matter. And even with their excess of money are a little bit tapping into some regions in Florida. They certainly have not said it's going to be a main priority, not as it was for Hillary Clinton, not even as it was for Biden back in 2020. But they did said they would you know, spend a little bit of money there. And I think the reason for that is to benefit the down ballot Democrats there. But the point here, to me at least, is that all of this money is being spent in these states because Joe Biden has it. The reason why Trump's team is not in these states is because they just simply don't have it, right? That's the fundamental problem here. When you have Biden out fundraising you in one night compared to the entire month of February, it calls into question your ability to spend money on your campaign. And it isn't just that. It isn't just to the fact that Laura Trump thinks the GOP voters would like to see the RNC pay Donald Trump's legal fees. The fact is the RNC is paying for Donald Trump's legal fees. You are seeing that these joint committees here are allowing Donald, allowing Donald Trump to fundraise for legal bills, to fundraise money here, right? You know, you're seeing here that Donald Trump is using this money. A share of the donation by the RNC will, as been declared now, go to the group footing his legal bills before going to the party. And so that is this problem here. When Donald Trump is doing all this fundraising, I think back in 2020, it was a very different story because he didn't have these legal bills to face, right? He doesn't have these legal bills to front. He didn't have, you know, judges ordering him to spend $150 million in cases, right? I think you are having Donald Trump in such a poor position, quite literally such a poor position in the monetary sense. And you now see that the Trump campaign and the RNC are scrambling to allow him to stay afloat. Well, what that means is no money is being spent on the campaign. I mean, very, very little money you are seeing actually is translating to Republicans across this country, to Donald Trump's candidacy efforts. I mean, it is laughable at this point that this has gone on for so far, and yet there is such a deficit for the Democratic, for the Republican Party, from the Democratic Party. And that is what is going to be a continued problem throughout this election cycle, because it isn't just legal fees now, right? A lot of the court cases that we expect to pop up, some of which will be after the election. So between now and November 5th, this will be held over Donald Trump's head. He will be consistently and always worried about his legal bills. And so will the RNC and so will his campaign. And so when I, you know, when I'm looking at it objectively, I don't think there's a pathway for Donald Trump to win this election as you see these fundraising numbers come in. I think his numbers are looking good relatively to 2020, but 2022 has completely thrown away my perception or my trusting in these polls that they will always underestimate Republicans. And I also now recognize that there is a shift in these polls. You're seeing Biden improve in swing states, improve on the national level. You are seeing things here that are benefiting President Biden, and the money is a big part of it. And so as you get to, you know, closer and closer to November, we will see that more money will be coming in to both sides of the aisle, right? More money will be coming in than ever. Right now, you see that the estimations for the 2024 campaign in its entirety are expecting to rival $10 billion spent. 
2016 was our most expensive election in U.S. history. Then it was 2020. Then it was 2024. And it isn't just inflation. And it certainly, honestly, really isn't inflation. The fact is, money in politics speaks. The average congressional race costs millions of dollars to win. That was not the case, even by the margins, uh, you know, by the uh, equivalent amounts of money in the 90s, in the 80s, even in the 2000s. This surge of money comes as more mediums are coming to the American public. At one point in time, there was only so much radio ads you could buy. There was only so much TV ads you could buy. Now it's digital strategy. It's on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. Like the videos you're watching today, you probably got an advertisement watching something on YouTube today from the Trump campaign, from the Biden campaign. And that's where a lot of this money is going. And especially as things become more digitized, and especially as there is a you know increased effort to try to drive up turnout in this election, money is being spent everywhere, in field offices, on volunteers, on paying interns, right? Things that didn't exist in the 2016 space when Hillary Clinton had unpaid interns, when Donald Trump had unpaid interns, and now they're all being paid, right? These things add expenses to campaigns, and only one campaign can clearly match that. And there's a reason for why that is. Looking at these legal fees, it isn't just, you know, legal fees that I think are deterring potential donors or potential, you know, prominent Republicans from being part of the Republican Party in this year. I think they very much are going to vote for Trump. They very much are going to back him. They are going to support him publicly. But financially is another story. Financially, honestly, matters the most here. I think because people were so burned after the 2020 election, when Donald Trump raised hundreds of millions of dollars after the 2020 election, in an effort to go to the courts and say this election was rigged, he needed to pay those legal fees somehow, and he fundraised hundreds of millions of dollars. Him and the Republican Party and Republican candidates going into those court cases, and absolutely nothing came of it. Lost every single notable case. The Supreme Court wouldn't even hear the case. You found that Donald Trump spent the most money on probably one of the most poor performing legal strategies and legal campaigns we have seen in this nation. And so voters, donors, whoever it might be, anyone who could be considering sending 5, 10, 25, 2,500, depending on who you are, to the Trump campaign are now a lot more hesitant. And especially after all this drama with the RNC and the failure to separate money for the RNC instead of Trump's legal bills, it is now becoming a problem here. This fundraising deficit has been consistent since the moment Biden launched his re-election campaign. This fundraising deficit has been maintained by the Democratic Party in 2016 and 2020. The only fundamental difference between 2020 and 2024 are the polling numbers that show President Trump in a better place than he was four years ago. But money speaks. Money talks. And the Biden campaign recently announced that in the same states that are highlighted here, with the exception of Florida, after Labor Day, the Biden campaign is dropping 250 million dollars on advertisements in these states 250 million dollars a quarter of a billion dollars being spent in seven battleground states that the biden campaign is making a concerted effort to win and maintain from the last election it makes a lot of sense but financially speaking that is such a large amount to put things into perspective that is a fourth of the entirety of what Joe Biden raised in the last election. To put another thing into perspective, last evening with Obama, Biden, and Clinton, they raised 2.6% of what was raised in the 2020 election. 2.6%. That's a lot for a singular evening. And I think if these types of events continue, if the Biden campaign can tap into this and can fundraise the same way they did in the last election, these numbers are going to start looking a lot better. For President Biden. Right now, the Biden campaign seems to be laying a lot lower than I think you would see in the prime of a general election season, but he is visiting a significant number of states. Right now, Trump has visited only one swing state in the past two weeks. Joe Biden has visited eight. I think you are seeing now the Biden campaign making these efforts, making, you know, going out of their way now to get Biden up there. I think for a while we saw a very, very dormant campaign, and that is no longer the case. They're hitting Trump where it hurts, financially, logistically, whatever it might be, they are going after Trump and they are outpacing him and his campaign at nearly every side. 
And what that also will do, and we'll talk about this in a future video, we'll talk about this as you know, it becomes more relevant, but it also now begins to combat this idea that Biden is a basement candidate, that Biden can't do these things because of cognitive ability, right? All of these Republican talking points go out the window when Biden is traveling from state to state, making speeches like the ones he did at the State of the Union, doing these fundraisers, being more present, being more visible, getting out there on social media. All of these things start to reel in the base, inspire the base. And I think Democrats are on track to turn the tides of this election, and the finances are one part of it, and probably one of the most important ones, and they've been killing it since the beginning. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already, and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch, and then a playlist for a 2024 presidential election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all later today.